Fish on, fish on. On the Palomar jig. Oh, nice. Oh, you got a big fish. I can yeah. see him down there shining. Wow, it's a pretty good size red snapper, guys. Right after we pulled up to the first spot, Louisa and I both dropped down a jig and we both got hit. Oh, oh yeah, I got one. Gosh, oh, I just got cut on. off. Just this got is cut what off. I saw earlier. <laughs> Woo! Ching got me. Oh, Glad gosh. you stayed buttoned up. You might have a grouper. I hope so. Wow. On that three and a half ounce <laughs> Palomar jig. Could have had a resisted. double to start it off. <laughs> I got sliced through and yep, you got a grouper. Oh yeah, that's there a you good go. way to start. All right. <laughs> Don't know if he's gonna make it. It's a good start though. Just got cut off by a king and she got a little red grouper. That's on, a good way to start. It's on the Palomar three and a half ounce jig too. Is that yeah. what you were saying? That's what size you're using? Yeah, three and a half pounds. Perfect. They seem to like Man, it. Man, he got it hooked <laughs> in there good. And there it is. That's what is happening on. Little guy. Oh, he's on the surface too. Fish on. All right, well I just started uh, trolling a couple of these C&H lures. I got a tuna tango here, and uh, I was hoping for maybe a king or something, but I'm not sure what I got. It didn't make a long run like a king does, even though I have a fairly stiff drag on here. All right, well, here he is. Not a king, but it makes good bait. That's a uh, little bonita on the tuna tango. So we're doing, and this is one of the uh, rigged and ready ones that CNH has. So it already comes with the wire cable and stuff. It's perfect when you're going for kings. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw that guy in the cooler. Keep him for bait later in case we drop some stuff down for some grouper. Oh, fish on. Good. Good job. Woo! Wonder what could he be? It's right here. Oh, looks here. like a grouper. Another looks red. Looks like another red. Ah, this one is little. It's like a little guy. A little guy in a Palomar jig again. <laughs> they seem to really like this. I'm gonna let this guy go. Another one. Yeah. Oh, I got him that time. Oh, that's a good one. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're back out here out of the plantation on Crystal River. And we're doing a little bit of grouper digging today. Grouper's in season for another month or so. And that's what we got. It's a gag. Oh, and he might keep. It's going to be close. Well, I don't know. I think that one's going to keep without any problem, actually. Pretty good sized fish. And on this one, I just used a frozen thread fin to test it out. Decent fish, man. Real pretty fish. They gotta be 24 inches to keep out here in the Gulf of Mexico. And I think he's gonna make it, but we'll go ahead and stick him on the tape and see what happens. Oh yeah, there's your first keeper. And on a grouper, of course, you measure with a pinch tail the longest distance. This one's almost 26 inches. Plenty big enough to keep. And check these teeth out here. A lot of people don't know how sharp grouper's teeth are. But you see that? You get your hand in there. It is not like lipping a large mouth bass. It will rip you up. So what I'm about to do here is rig up this live bait rig for kingfish. Um, we're actually using frozen thread fins on it, but this is a CNH Lures live bait rig rigged with the AFW hard wire. It's just a one out J hook in the front and a treble hook in the back. Some people like the double treble hooks. I prefer the J hook in the front just because when that J hook does get in their mouth, it stays a lot better than one of the little treble hooks. And uh, comes really nicely rigged for you, so you don't have to go through all that hassle when you're on the boat or rig a bunch of stuff the night before if you're busy. And uh, they do them very well. And after I get that unraveled, I just, uh, they already have a really nice swivel on there as well. All I gotta do is just tie a uni knot, get it on the line, get my bait on it, and send it out. And on these, the way you're gonna wanna rig them 
is you're gonna wanna take the J-hook and put it right there through the nostrils. There's a couple different ways you can do it, but I found that's the best way. And then this hook, you can just leave it trailing behind. A lot of people do that. Sometimes you can just take it and tuck it in there on the tail, especially if it's about the same length like this one. Either way will work. And makes your rigging process on the boat a lot quicker because it's already set and ready to go. And we're just gonna leave that sit behind the boat. Hope a kingfish comes by and picks it up. And then after that, Louisa hooked into a lane snapper, which is really cool because we don't catch a lot of lane snapper around here. A lot of action there. There you go. Got him. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> You're down there, huh? They're definitely down there. The right. bottom is alive. Oh, nice. That's a big lane snapper. Look at the size of that lane snapper she just caught. <laughs> Not the grouper we were going for, but wow, look at the colors on it. And it's a big one too. Very good to eat. Looks similar to the mutton snapper, because mutton snappers have a dot back here too, but this is way different. They have a lot of really bright yellow stripes running down a beautiful red tail. Of course, we have them in the middle grounds and in some deeper areas, but we don't get a lot of lane snapper in 50 feet of water out of Crystal River. We get them all the time in the Keys and the Bahamas and other areas like that in the Caribbean, but around here, it's a pretty nice treat to catch a lane snapper that size. You usually see them in deeper water than 50 or 60 feet like we're fishing in. But yeah, great fish, Louisa, well done. Got it. Job. Man, you're on fire. I didn't even get to the bottom yet. <laughs> you're gonna get one too. As soon as you hit the bottom, they're there. Yep. Get oh, so much little stuff messing with it. Oh, what do you got there? It looks like a gag. Oh, um, let's see what this uh, one is. Red grouper. Da -da -da. Another. Red grouper snag. Ooh. Must be a lot of them down there. I snagged this one. Sorry, buddy. There we go. Got one. That one's better. See, I told you. Oh, that you. was the one I was looking for, Louisa. Ah. Woo. Oh, that red grouper's making a mess. It is. Let's send him down. Let's send him. They got a big old gag coming up, I think. All right. He's not big. He's fighting like he is. <laughs> oh, I think I got another keeper gag. Oh, wow. That's definitely a keeper. Good job, Jimmy. <laughs> They're here. Go! And he's kicking everywhere. Gag, then lane snapper, then red grouper, then gag. Four fish in a row. All good quality game fish. There's a lot of little like grunts and stuff down there as well. Little snappers that keep pecking. It's the size you want right there. Right as we were catching all of those grouper, the flat line just started peeling out. Oh, oh, oh. All right, guys, now you're on. Oh, man, I knew it was a kingfish. I could tell right away that it was a kingfish. All right. Flat line started running towards the front. Lucky it didn't tangle up the other rods. I think we got us a king. Oh, uh, I hope so. Hope it's a good one. Digging. <laughs> Woo! Got him, and that's why you keep a flat line out. Again, I got that CNH stinger rig, the uh, rigged and ready stinger rig, so we didn't have to rig it. It feels like a good fish. The rod and reel that I'm using is a Tsunami 20 to 40 class rod, and I actually have this on their 8,000 reel, because I like having a lot of line on a flat line. And this fish, I have a feeling, is gonna take me to the front of the boat. They put up amazing fights. They make long runs. They're really strong fish. They get close to the boat and they make more long runs. It's just one of those fish that I love catching. You guys ready to see him? He's right here by the boat. He's right here under the boat. Oh yeah, that's a big king. Look at the size of it. We got a good one. That's a smoker. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Look at that. See how light this drag is? You got a big fish like that. You don't want to mess it up. Ooh, it's a good one. Don't give it any more line in. Let's head down. Let's head into the water. You might be better off back here, and I'll gaff right here. Beautiful fish, Jimmy. There he is. That's a smoker, guys. Look at that. He actually was hooked in the mouth. That's good right there. 
Get that gaff out of there. Man, I like kingfish for so many reasons. They're such a cool looking fish. They have those sharp teeth, you know, like a manly looking fish. And of course they make great fish dip. And that's one of the things that Louisa and I eat all the time when we're at home. There it is. Woo! <laughs> Crystal River special. Grouper, grouper, snapper, grouper, kingfish. One after another after another, so many different species. And again, we would have never got this fish if I didn't have that flat line out. That's why it pays to keep a flat line out. Nice smoker, man. Good fish. That'll be fine smoked up with some fish dip right there. Look at the chompers on this thing. That's why we use that AFW wire. You can see right there, those are some pretty dangerous looking teeth, huh? You don't want your fingers anywhere near that. You could lose a finger easy. Boom, there he is. Cooler's starting to look pretty good. Got him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One grouper after another. And that's why I love fishing at a Crystal River so much. Lived here a long time, pretty much my whole life, and uh, used to catching fish just like this. You can pull keeper gags in one after another. There's nothing wrong with that. Do have a long close season. Have about a six month close season and that changes year to year too. So uh, definitely check your regulations of when it's open. But right now, currently, they close in December. And it's November right now when we're out here fishing. And another one that's probably a good 24, 25 inches. I'll measure them just to be safe. I do recommend always measuring your fish before you throw them in the box. A lot of fun though, catching them. We dropped our lines down again and we ended up getting nailed right away. There it is. All right. Ooh, you're got okay. him. <laughs> Gosh, I gotta Ooh. love this fishery. It happens so fast. Oh, and guess what? It's it a is a red snapper. Another species. Oh man. And you know, look at this, he's got, oh, a little remora fell off of him. I'm saying he had a little remora on him and it just fell off. This is not what we wanted to see because when you see one, you usually start seeing a bunch and the grouper bite is hot here right now. I'm hoping I don't have to pick up and move because these little 16, 18 inch red snapper will start coming in by the hundreds once you get one. Pretty fish, here he goes. All right. <laughs> Wanted to make sure he had it. Gave him an extra second there. And he got weaker, but it feels like a grouper. Yep, there it is, it's a grouper. Not quite big enough. Just an itty bitty guy. He's gonna get to swim away. Oh, this is, this is gonna be a good one. Oh yeah! Oh, good hit. Wow. Good yank. There we go. That's a good one. <laughs> you got the fish I just had. Yeah. I think you That's just a got good it. fish right there. Oh man. You gotta really slam it to him. Woo! Even with circle hooks or offset circle hooks, I still yank on a grouper because I want to bring them out of that rock as fast as I can. And this is a big fish. This is a real big fish. Alright. Good job, Jimmy. Whoa! And he took back off. Oh my goodness! Woo! On a thread fin. <laughs> Man! They're definitely out here. They're chewing good. Wow. What a fish. All right, I'll show you guys a couple ways to hold the grouper here. As you can see here, there's a groove below and a groove above that lip. You hold the fish just like that. It's usually a great way to hold them to keep your hands out of the teeth or the gills. Another way, if you do go in the gills, don't go in the red, because that'll cut you. And that white part on the inside of the red is actually, it's really sharp. So you just slide it in on the outside of the gills and you can hold it that way as well. A couple neat ways to hold a grouper there that'll keep you from getting cut up. Again, right there on the outside, or you hit those grooves on the top and bottom of its lips. Nice fish. And I had my buddy Jim with me on this trip, so I brought Jim in to let him catch a couple fish as well. And uh, Jim and I dropped our lines down, and then we ended up doubling up, and Jim had a really nice red snapper that he hooked, and I got a red grouper. There you go. 
<laughs> First drop. There you go, Jim. Let's pull up to another spot. Louisa's uh, gonna be jigging on the other side. And, oh, yeah. Got my buddy Jim down here with me. <laughs> Pulling some grouper in. Oh, it's a red snapper. Not what we were looking for. I got a grouper though. Nice one, man. Golly, if you could keep it. Look at the size of it. Wow. Whoo! Oh, and doubled up on a red. <laughs> Two reds, a red grouper and a red snapper. What a double. <laughs> yeah, well. He's got his on the back he's working with. This one I do not think is gonna make it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that one go. The red grouper wasn't quite a keeper, so I ended up throwing him back in the water. And right as we were trying to get Jim's fish under control, Louisa hooked up on a jig behind us on the other side of the boat. Fish on, fish on. On the Palomar jig. Oh, nice. Oh, you got a big fish. I can yeah. see him down there shining. Wow, it's a pretty good size red snapper, guys. On the Palomar jig, the three and a half ounce Palomar jig. <laughs> Look at the size of this fish. Woo! Oh, that's bigger than Big I fish. Big brother. Jim and Louisa hooked in some really nice sized red snapper. I mean, those were big snapper for 40 to 50 feet of water. That was actually a triple that happened. I just threw the red grouper back in, as you guys saw. Louisa hooked this one up on the Palomar jig. And uh, Jim got one on some live bait. 